sure we get a coach on here for you who can go through the brackets, and he will do that a little later on. And I was shocked he'd come in studio. What a nice job he's doing for us here in that department. Steve Peichel is the head coach of Rutgers. Obviously, Coach Stony Brook, Connecticut player for Jim Calhoun all these years. Knows the Big Ten and every team you're going to discuss here a little later on. And he says hello. Coach, good to have you with us here today, I am pal. so honored that you have me on and excited to be here. How about you coming in like that? What a job. I appreciate it. All right, how about the transition from Stony Brook to Rutgers? You've been here two years. Rutgers was very competitive in a lot of games this year against good competition in the Big Ten. But how about that transition you had to make from Stony Brook? Let me hear some thoughts on that. Well, I tell you, it was uh, an exciting transition. Every time I come in that uh, gymnasium, I look up at those banners, and boy, it motivates you to recruit. When you see the Michigans and the Michigan States and the Indianas. And, good point. And the league is unbelievable. And, you know, I just love the fact that I have two chances to go to the NCAA tournament. If you have a great season, you could go. In, in, Even an in, average season, you can go. Even an average season. And then you have the weekend where you could have a great weekend. You know, at the Stony Brook level, it's the weekend only. And uh, that's very tough. As you can see, a great Vermont team we'll get plays to that in a minute. well all year long. And then it's one game. Comes that, down to. Very, very tricky. Uh, so you have been happy. Rutgers is over. And they have some great basketball tradition. Vital was there. Valvano was there. Played there. Wenzel was there. They haven't made the NCAA in a long time. But they have resources. They, they, you know, they, they have facilities. I mean, you would think eventually you get some players and you can compete, no? We have a terrific AD, which I think is so important. Pat Hobbs, we're building a $125 million practice facility as we speak. Um, they're building a brand new academic center. They just got a $15 million donation by the Ruskin family, who's a great supporter of the athletic department. A lot of good things going on. You know, on the campus, we signed our best recruiting class in a long time. Oh, you did? Good to hear that. Yeah, okay. and we have a couple kids sitting out that I think are terrific, and uh, we so you think Rutgers going to in the next couple of years should be pretty good? I think we're going to be pretty good. We're going to make that move. We're going to make that move. Wow, that, and that's a hard move to make, you know, where you're being competitive but losing to being competitive and you're winning half your games. That's a tricky move to make on Division One level. There's no doubt in our league, probably the toughest to win a road game in the country. I mean, these Even venues, more than the ACC? I think so. These venues are always sold out. You go to Purdue, unbelievable. You go to Michigan State, unbelievable. You know, you go to Wisconsin, Tough, tough venues with some great coaches, Hall of Fame coaches, John Beeline, as you know, and Coach Izzo, and these are these are really great programs, and I'm just excited because Rutgers, a great university and a great media market, as you know, and great following, and that was what I was most surprised. These people are passionate. Well, they show up if you uh, win, they will show up down there, 100. percent They showed up for the football with. Uh, with uh, Shiano, uh, they mm-hmm. will show up. There's no question about it. All right, how about the game the other day? Let's talk about the one bid leagues. Steve Pike will do a bracket for us at five. The one bid leagues. You've been part of it. You've lost that game and you've won mm-hmm. that game. No you've lost them at home. I don't think you played one of those games on the road, did you? We played them on the road. Oh, you too. played at Vermont yeah. once too. Yeah. Uh, you've lost some heartbreakers. Absolutely. Uh, and Vermont finally got one back because they used to uh, supply yeah. the pain, <laughs> and they finally got one back. They had beaten UMBC 23 consecutive <laughs> times, and they had beaten them twice this year by double digits mm-hmm. and Maryland Baltimore County goes up to Burlington on Saturday morning great game and went in the last second three let's go through that for yeah, a second I tell you what as I was watching that game I know both coaches very well and they're both really good coaches and Vermont one of the toughest places to play anywhere in the country and and with some really good players but comes down to one play at the very end and Lyles who's a really good player I mean scored 30 points I remember the last time we played him at Stony Brook a really good player makes the big dagger and, and top of the key jump shot. Yeah, they go on to you know win that game, and now I know Vermont's playing in the NIT. But you have to be perfect at those places. You really do. And it's almost weird, Steve. Is almost more pressure on you at home in those games sometimes than on the road. You know that? No doubt. And, you know, you have more fans buzz and tickets and you have all those issues. You know, I always liked being the guy that went on the road. I thought you could be more focused and you had less people. More as a team thing. You go travel the way you traveled all year. It's a little easier sometimes. A mm-hmm. lot of these one-bid leagues, we saw Wagner lose a game this year. A lot of these one-bid leagues do the home court for the regular season highest seed team. Sometimes they're better off of playing these games on the road. <laughs> There's no question about it. You know what? There, there is. I wouldn't argue at all with you. I've been on both sides of it. and I like being the team that was ranked lower. I, I thought it took a lot of pressure 
everyone knows the one seed in those tournaments. That's it. Nobody else thinks anyone else could win. Good point. Win. Right. So it's very, it's very different. And when you have a young team, it's a lot of pressure. And young teams at home to win that game when everyone's already decided that you have won it. Right. And Baron, Maryland, Baltimore County is coached by Dave Odom's kid. That's so uh, they do it. That was just a great, great win. That's a tricky game. And they get regrouped for the you lost a bad game one year to somebody in Illinois came mm-hmm. out to Stony Brook. Exactly. It's very tricky sometimes to go out there and get yourself regrouped for the NIT. No doubt about that. We Bruce Weber, we played in, and you know we had our best team ever that year. We lose a game, Albany, right? Yeah, by a couple, and then we have to bounce back and play a real good Illinois team. But we were lucky; we got that game as a home game. You did. Illinois' gym was being re- rented. Oh, that's why you got the game. <laughs> exactly. in the, I always wondered that. That's why you got the game at home. All right. Did you have any major problems with Penn State and Nebraska not getting bids from your league? I will tell you. Um, I think our league is tremendous, and Penn State. Is really good team. I, I was. I find it hard to believe there's 30 or so more at large bid teams that are better than than Penn State and Nebraska finished fourth in in what I consider as good a league as any. So I was a little bit surprised, you know, at that. I know the other teams are good and I'm sure they're worthy, but um, they have pros on both those teams. Um, they won some huge games to finish fourth in the Big Ten. I know the Wars every five. Yep. thirteen and five. Uh, Penn State beat Ohio State three times. I think the Ohio State's very underrated team. They're going to cause some problems in this tournament for somebody. Um, you know, so I, I was surprised. I thought we'd get six in. I really thought those you teams thought those were worth it, huh? Without a doubt, and and you know, a fourteen team league that we have to go through the wars that these guys have to go through to come out in the top you know, echelon of this league um, really kind of surprised me. And we've been getting seven or eight, too, in the last few years. So it's been a league with multiple, multiple bids. All right, if you're Andy Enfield, what do you tell your team at USC when you went 12-6 and six and Arizona State went 9-8-10 and to eight and ten and they make it and you don't? What do you tell them? I mean, you know, and especially down the stretch, some of these teams – you know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma struggled down the stretch, and, and you know Arizona State's great to Hurley's great family, and he's a great coach. But they, they lost a lot of games down the stretch, so I always thought they wanted the hotter teams in at that time. But uh, and they don't go head to head. I mean, Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma two out of three. Notre Dame wins at Syracuse the last couple weeks of the year. They don't get a bid, and Syracuse gets the bid. They didn't go to the head to head. I used to. I used to be the tiebreaker head to head. They never go to head to head anymore. I would think that. You know, I would think that would be one of the main criteria. If you're I that use. close, you got to go. Okay, who beat each other? That's what it does. every other sport does. That. Why doesn't the NCAA, Stevie? Isn't it crazy? I, I. You know what? I don't know. That's what makes it great, though. At this time of the year, the controversy and the teams that don't get in. There's always some really worthy teams that don't get in and I think certainly Penn State and Nebraska have a case. And it's funny too, look at all the teams that went under 500 in their league that got in. You know, if you count first loss in the conference tournament there are nine teams that, you know 18 or 20 games, won less than half and nine of the 68 or in the NCAA tournament. You don't have to go 500 in your league. They, you don't have nine NFL teams that go 7-9 and nine make the playoffs. <laughs> you don't have to go 500. Even in bowls and football, you got to go 500 to get a bid. <laughs> you don't have to do that now in the NCAA tournament. I know. It's kind of um, you know surprising. And I always think, too, at the end of the year, like they're giving a lot of value to wins at the beginning of the year. All of us as coaches are figuring our teams out at the beginning of the year. At the end of the year, you have kind of have your rotations and you know your freshmen. And So I look at teams that are playing well at the end of the year. I think that's more important than a couple of the early season wins. As you know, teams are very different at the beginning. There's ranked teams and, you know, we've had teams in our league. Northwestern was ranked early. Minnesota was ranked early. Well, you know, they got injuries and they were a different team at the end of the year. Great coaches there and good programs. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the year, your teams have kind of figured out how good a team is. And, and that's why I think I think late wins are more important, in my mind, than, than earlier. And they ain't go with that. Oklahoma's case in point, Arizona State. All right, Mr. Piker will come back, and we're going to go through the brackets. We need an expert. He's going to go through all these teams. So stick with us here on Mad Dog on